she's not going anywhere because she hasn't gone anywhere in three decades other than up. So hate as much as you want to hate. So I decided to sing along with my pre-recorded track, which is very common in the music industry. And I'm, I'm very proud of my, my performance. Should you be shocked? Should you care? Should you be drinking decaf coffee? Probably not, but I don't like the jitters. Everyone loves to pick on Beyonce. It's like, oh, here's the national treasure. Here's an incredibly talented woman that we're just gonna conveniently forget is an amazing singer. That's right, Washington Post. Stop calling Beyonce. Stop it. Get some help. So why am I talking about this? This was over a decade ago. Why does it matter? Well, because people still love to bring it up to try and discredit Beyonce. But here's what I'm going to tell you right now. There's five reasons why it's perfectly fine and acceptable and probably a good idea to prepare to lip sync at any time if you're a performer at Beyonce's level. Reason number one, she cares about her people and her employees. If you cancel, you don't get paid. And that's not a problem for Beyonce. She's rich AF. I just learned AF, I'm hip with the kids. Anyway, yeah, you get cancellations, you don't get money. So that means sound engineer Bobby can't feed his little kid Billy. The following is Beyonce visiting a school. Think about Billy. Beyonce does. Better than you. Ah. And speaking of cancellations, let's talk about the myriad reasons why someone could cancel. Reason number one, exhaustion. But everyone gets tired. Why should Beyonce be an exception? Because she is an exception, because I don't care who you know that you think works really hard. Look at this insane tour schedule. Most of these stops only happen after three days. You have Miami, Florida, Cincinnati, Ohio, Foxburg, Massachusetts, Philadelphia, PA, Baltimore, Maryland, etc., etc. Now she's leaving the country. Now she's going back to New Jersey, Georgia, Texas, New Orleans, Dallas, etc., etc., etc. Then she flies to freaking France. And this isn't just her on a freaking bus. If you have never toured as a musician, it is exhausting. You're never sleeping in the same place twice, and that absolutely affects your sleep according to science. I'm gonna probably put something down here so you know I'm not full of it. You've got noise, you got bus movement, you got airplane movement, you got your crew, you got your tight cramped space, you're not with your family, you're not with your friends, you're going out and you're performing and sweating and exercising, you're keeping up with rehearsals just to make sure that you're on point. It's exhausting. It's really, really tiring. Those businesses and her family don't cease to exist just because she's on tour. Okay, but let's extend an olive branch. Even if we don't want to, let's just say that, okay, she's famous, she's successful, she signed up to work this hard. She is in control of her own schedule. She can make it so she is less tired and can perform. Well, pop is competitive. I mean, very, very competitive because there's a lot of money in it. And the best way to market anything is event marketing. If she wants to keep up with Cardi B and all of these other artists and stay on top just like she has been for the last three decades, she has to grind. She has to. She has to be that aggressive in her touring schedule. Or she's just not Beyonce anymore. Let's look at reason number two vocal damage and vocal fatigue. I'm an opera singer, and I have friends who are more successful than me. Let's not talk about that. But anyway, they have been on tour or have been assigned a role and had to sing it in a very high stakes situation, but then have some vocal fatigue or damage. So they get checked out by what's called an ENT, an ear, nose and throat doctor. And that doctor tells them you cannot perform you are at risk for permanent vocal damage, or vocal damage in general. That would be detrimental to a singer's income, right? So you're better off just taking the day off. And while taking the day off and not singing in a role that you probably really trained very hard for, that's, that's unfortunate. But luckily, theaters have understudies. So why doesn't Beyonce just get an understudy? As Jeff's understudy, I have to wear my Jeff wig on top of my Chang hair, and then my ball cap on top of that. I bet Beyonce, die-hard Beyonce fans, could probably tell that it's not Beyonce from 50 feet away or more. She can't have an understudy. Beyonce's the show. Beyonce is, is who people 
come to when they want the show. They're not seeing Les Miserables, who can have an understudy, and Jean Valjean's a character. No, no, no. Beyonce's not a character. Beyonce's a person, and that's what people paid tickets for. And we already talked about and established how detrimental a cancellation of a gig is. So there is two more reasons. Two, she has to consider her vocal health and can't go on in case of an injury. And three, three, Beyonce can't have an understudy. And I just want to double down on this one. Whenever I personally hear people scoffing at lip syncing, it's usually people that are from the theater or opera world. And it blows my mind that they just don't consider that Beyonce can't have an understudy, but also cares about the people that she pays money to, like little Billy, the sound engineer's kid. <laughs> We already covered those tour schedules. Think about how long those performances are, how numerous they are, how little breaks she gets in between every single show. Reason number four. I got the right amount of fingers this time. I'm on it. I'm on top of things. If she loses her voice, she can't record albums. She can't record the backing tracks that she might even lip sync to. She can't be a singer. The risks are tremendous. What is wrong with having a little bit of, an, uh, of a lip syncing part during a dancing sequence so she can get a vocal break and not have to sing for two hours straight? Once again, I point to theater and opera. An opera singer, even if, it, even if an opera is four hours long, no opera singer is going to be on stage for two hours straight singing very difficult stuff. And some of Beyonce's stuff is really a hard sing. And so there you have it. She's incredibly busy with a, an aggressive touring schedule. She has responsibilities to pay people. She has to take care of her health. She has to prevent really big vocal damage. There's a lot of reasons why you just want to have some lip syncing prepared. Because let's not forget, she can absolutely sing with the best of them. So what's wrong with her taking precautions for her health and for her business? There should be no controversy or drama here, but it always seems like everybody is always like, aha, gotcha. I knew you lip sync. Well, duh. It's, it's so pervasive in the industry, but everyone points to Beyonce because she is the king of the hill, queen of the hill. Let's go with queen of the hill. She is on top, so people like to point at her and drag her down. But you're not going to be able to drag down Queen Bee. Her fans will not let that happen. And this is me being a neutral party. I respect Beyonce. I don't listen to a lot of Beyonce in my spare time, but I even I know she's not going anywhere because she hasn't gone anywhere in three decades other than up. So hate as much as you want to hate. It's Beyonce.